bit of a different video. I'm going to be showcasing me one of my mechs today. You can see it on the counter here, and on that shelf over there, you can see the next one coming up. Right then, let's go on to it. Yo, I'm going to be showcasing a mech this time. Tutorials are going to take a while because I'm still trying to figure out how to make a punching animation. This is my ooh, this is my first mech I ever built. Well, second, but I'm not going to ever talk about the first. So, first thing you'll notice, wow, that's a lot of rivets, what an odd colour, and <laughs> there's a lot of circles. So, we'll begin with the head. I decided to give it a bit of a hunchback type look, with a head at the front, and it's a bit larger than most heads, but I think it looks nice, it adds to the charm. This mech did inspire the style I went with for every other mech I made, that being caution stripes, the checkerboard pattern, this lovely colour, the rivets, and the, <laughs> the weird looking heads. So, let's see, we'll begin with the feet. I did initially make these first, like way before actually making the check head and all that, but it didn't work out, and I just scrapped them, but eventually recycled them for this. Now, this make looks, it may look nice to you, but I would not copy anything from this if you were building your own. It's better to make your own style of building rather than taking something from someone else. That you just won't learn that way. Now, <laughs> one thing that was incredibly tiring when I made this mech and all the others you'll find is just placing all the rivets. They're each 0.5 studs away from the corners and let's see, how many did I put? We've got 4,600, 3,600, okay, that's a thousand, <laughs> thousand individual rivets, that's great. Alright, we'll go for key features of this thing that I'm proud of now, <laughs> starting with this. I, I don't know what it is or where you'd see this in the real world, but I like, ooh, that's not, that uh, doesn't matter, it looks really nice. And it's a bit of a, det it's a detail that I kind of lost while building. This is the only what time you'll see it. Next would happen to be this mechanical arm here. I added the pulleys and it, it adds a sense of realism. It looks like it would actually work despite these pulleys very clearly not being able to hold up this weight. But uh, what can you say? Well, you could say shit, but... The arms, the arms I'm proud of, they're rather armored, I'm proud of a lot of things. I use power servers here, so I, if you're building your mech, just steer clear from power servers. I know that I'm using them here, but I'll go into detail later why I just don't. The inner joints are around here, which is by the head itself, so if you want to knock off the arms of the thing, you have to go through all the head armor, all the chest armor, just to knock them off. You're, it's no use just cutting through any of these circular things, it's just too much armor. And luckily I don't really lose arms in a fight, I just don't deal enough damage. Now, weapon one here, it was initially going to be a sword blade, but that just didn't really work out with the power server, it would lag my game if whenever I move the armors. The power server just doesn't doesn't mix well with anything that isn't another power variant. More of these insects. Neon orange. I find that that I find that neon orange isn't really something you'd see on a mech. It's usually a neon blue or a an incredibly luminous red that hurts the eyes. <laughs> another sign of the primitiveness. This is a ball joint block, and I, ooh, I control the thing with an aim part. So, in my second mech that will come eventually, it makes use of a mouse 3D position and a global to relative to control where the turret aims based on where I point the mouse. This is a bit more finicky. It usually gets stuck when I activate the thing and it'll be pointing backwards, and I'll never be able to fire it. But for the brief, for the limited l knowledge of logic I had at the time, the fact that I could get a gun to aim is nice. 
It also fires, obviously, else why would I go through the effort? It makes use of that auto-firing mechanism I showcased prior in the tutorial. This arm... This arm I kinda fell off the bandwagon with. I wouldn't call it... It's definitely not my best work. I think this arm in general just doesn't quite fit the quality of the whole mech. That and it just it tickles. It, power servos are not the way to go for weapons. Although, the asymmetry of the thing, that's pretty nice. Different shoulders, different... Different angles they go at. So let's actually unanchor the thing. I'll showcase the one benefit of a power servo, that being the thing's just going to connect together immediately. There's going to be no glitching, unless for the turret, but... Bonk, there we go. It's all in one piece. Let's see. I can showcase off the parts here. The power servo... If I had to use a throttle to adjust the speed at which they go from position to position, if not, it would just... It would appear there one second, and back there for the next. Although, changing the speed doesn't make a difference to the damage in this case. We've got this arm, which kind of juts out and then slices upward, and this one, which is a more primitive <laughs> BYM style cutting. Now, the issue with the uh, power servos is that they don't actually help the spike steel damage. So when you're building your mech, always use a regular servo. While power ones, they, you know, they're cool, they can lift any amount of weight you give them, they... that's all they have to them. They'll connect, they don't need to be no-collided to work, but when you're trying to have a mech battle with someone and I do this, I'm not going to really be doing much damage. There's no speed that's going into it. Since spikes inside here, they gain their damage by the velocity and speed in which they're moving when they hit the target. But while a regular servo will contribute to this and extend it, that's why you'll find incredibly fast mechs with spikes usually will deal a ton of damage. This it's not gonna do it's not gonna do anything. So now we'll go into the Another disappointed part of my mechs, um, I don't really have an entrance to them, I usually just no collide and walk into a, just a patch. Mech seat for control. Now if you are anything like I with the understanding of logic, a walking mech is leaps and bounds away from your comprehension. So just use a mech seat. It gets the process done, I can move around, I'm sure my legs are just scraping along the ground, but this thing is heavy and the mech seat doesn't care. I can move at a decent enough speed, though when turning you'll find that that is an issue, so if you're ever in a more fast and agile mech and someone is using a mech seat for theirs, get behind them. They're not going to reach you anytime soon. Oh, here's the turret in motion. You can move. <laughs> can't really move much left, right nor up and down, but it does fire, it deals damage, well, <laughs> it's a smaller mechs maybe, but nothing big. Marvel at that sight. The proportions... <laughs> the proportions are definitely not human-like, but that's the, that's the joy of making a mech. You get to decide the proportions. If I want to, let's say, make a an even bigger mech and just give it tiny little legs. I can do that, no one's gonna stop me. They might complain, but that's all they can do. Ugh. How nice. How beautiful. Though, rather, rather simple. The back of the legs, I... The back of the mech is a bit different from the front, if you couldn't, no duh. No shit, Sherlock. I've got two servos here, this is something that sticks with each and every mech design, you might get bored of it by mech 2, but the back here I just added little bits of detail by adding extra plates to each, each flat surface here, 
they, it would just not be the same if I didn't put these here. Now you can... <laughs> the shape of the thing, it's... Hmm, how would I describe... Oh, there we go. <laughs> look at the look at the shape of the torso, yeah. We've got the head sticking out. A sharp... <laughs> oh, you can see the turret is jutting off now. curving down here. There's no... There's no mechanical way that this thing would realistically work. Like, how would it turn left and right? This is just a solid hunk of metal. But, once again, you're the one who makes the mech. You're gonna... You're the only one who's gonna see every little imperfection on the mech. Uh, okay, everyone will see that, but that's beside the point. I am trying to make tutorials to cater for the newer players who would like to get into the mech market. If you have any questions on mechs, try send a comment down below. I'll send a link to the Mech League server. They're, well, <laughs> a bunch of mech makers in Elite Engineering. If you ever have more questions that I just can't answer due to a lack of logic understanding, send a message there because they'll definitely be able to help for now right that was a showcase thanks for watching and i'll see you later